Hi, everyone. Welcome to True Disabled Story. My name is Nico, and I use he, him pronouns. I'm a white man with blonde hair, large blue and brown spectacles, and a dark shirt underneath a gold uh, zip-up hoodie. I'm seated indoors uh, against an office wall and some bookcases. Uh, this is my home office. Like roughly 25% of Americans and 17% of Philadelphians, I'm disabled. And whether we look locally, nationally, or globally, disability communities are full of dynamic, diverse, and frankly delightful people uh, with their own stories to tell. All we have to do is listen. Uh, for those of you watching this who are eagle-eyed, you'll see that my guest today, Tony, is someone from my last video series, Your Disabled Joy. Uh, Tony has uh, shared with me that in the years since we first talked together, um, he has experienced rapid growth, doing a lot of cool things with his uh, disability advocacy. Tony's got a book out talking about being uh, unbreakable, which ties directly with his disability journey. So I'm happy to talk with him about his uh, diagnosis story. Tony, thanks for being here. How are you doing? Hello, Nico, and hello, everybody. I, I'm doing great. Uh, yes, as Nico said, my name is Tony Jacobson. Uh, and quickly, I, I am a white male. I'm wearing all black today. I have a black ball cap on that says hashtag unbreakable in white lettering on it. And uh, I'm in my studio today. And uh, behind me is a lot of great music equipment and other memorabilia. So that's, uh, that's my little introduction and clearance for that. Uh, thank you so much for having me today. Fantastic. Yeah, of course. So, Tony, I know a little bit about your story, but what was your path to diagnosis like? Was it like, was this a surprise, uh, something that comes out of the blue and hits you in the face? Or were you actively pursuing this or something in between? Yeah, so my path to diagnosis happened when I was very young. My disability, which is called osteogenesis imperfecta, or OI for short, it's brittle bone disease. I was born with it, but I wasn't diagnosed with it until I was about 16 months old. Uh, and what happened was I started to have fractures after I was born. I started breaking my leg. Uh, well, I broke my leg once, and then uh, it broke again maybe six months after that. So it was a very short time span between when I was starting to have fractures. So eventually, when I think it was maybe the third or fourth fracture when I was about 16 months old, uh, a doctor finally diagnosed me with having osteogenesis imperfecta. So it was definitely out of the blue. Nobody in my family had it. I'm considered what's called a spontaneous mutation of OI. And so it definitely did come out of the blue for my family. Uh, I was so young at the time, of course, I didn't understand it, but I, was, I just understand that I've had it my entire life. So yes, it was, it was that, that was the path to the diagnosis. Fantastic. Thank you, Tony. Uh, I myself, as you uh, know, have been diagnosed at birth. And again, with that spontaneous mutation, or um, they give you some science term, de novo, they called it, just a genetic mutation that occurs at random and then is present in the family line from there on out. I see you in that. Definitely. So you've had OI your entire life. What impact has that had on you as you've gone from you know, childhood into adulthood. How have you dealt with OI? What impact has it had for you professionally, maybe socially? Uh, paint that picture for us. Well, it's had a lot of effects on a lot of areas of my life. So, of course, with brittle bone disease, I was breaking my bones very frequently throughout my childhood. So I was just pretty much always in a constant state of being broken. <laughs> and so <clears throat> what that meant for me was using a wheelchair when I was a, when I was a kid. Um, I would get around, use a wheelchair, I would say, you know, 100% of the time for movement. And, um, and so I would always be broken. I would always be either laid up with a cast, with a plaster cast on one of my legs or another limb of my body. And it would also mean that I would be, you know, away from my friends. I would be out of school a lot. So when it came to socializing, I, I didn't have too much of a uh, social circle during those years as a child. And uh, it just meant a lot of time spent with myself, a lot of time uh, really 
learning how to be by myself and learning how to uh, understand what I was going through. But I did experience a lot of loneliness and a lot of just, uh, you know, using my imagination. Luckily for me, it, that was a positive part of it, is I learned to cultivate my, mo uh, my imagination. As I got older, it did change. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've always been an outgoing person, feeling like I can communicate, feeling like I wanted to be around people. So as I got older, I did start to gain more friends and uh, with my diagnosis, with OI, it's very rare, so I didn't know anybody else. I only knew one other person when I was a kid uh, that had OI, and her and I stayed in communication kind of through our early years and then lost communication later on. Uh, so I really didn't have a circle of friends who had the same diagnosis. I was the only disabled person in my circle. So that had a lot of impact on me as well because, you know, I had some friends who would look at me as disabled. I had other friends that looked at me as not disabled. It just depended. It was dependent on their perspective uh, as well. So, you know, again, it was that journey of learning how to navigate having this diagnosis. Um, with my OI, it really was something that's considered an invisible disability, especially later on when I started walking on crutches, because I did get out of the chair. I did start walking on crutches in my late teens. And um, so that kind of changed as well. And then I started walking when I was in my early 20s. So I didn't have any uh, mobility aids at that time. And that's when it really became an invisible disability because people really didn't um, see it. So it did have a lot of impact on me socially when it came to that as well, learning how to, again, navigate my disability for myself and also just navigating the social world and uh, even with employment, you know, really learning how to you know, get employed, how to get in and keep a job, and do I disclose my disability, do I not disclose it, you know, there was a lot involved with that, and so I learned a lot during those early years, and um, it, it really did have a, a big impact on me mentally, and really, uh, again, learning how to use my imagination, because I was able to now use that in, in my life to, uh, to succeed. Yeah, when you were talking about learning to be alone as a kid, that really resonated with me. Um, since I I had those experiences as well, um, I was also that kid with that rare disorder, always stuck in the hospital for one reason or another. Um, it really seemed like because the doctors didn't have answers, they tried to keep uh, me in in stasis. I guess I would say as much as possible, and like life, especially when you're a kid, just doesn't work that way. So mm -hmm. yeah, I see you in that. Yeah. So yeah, if you could like go back, if if we've invented time travel and you can go back and talk to your younger self or even talk to um, a family who uh, has a newborn with OI, what, what advice would you give people with your diagnosis or people facing this diagnosis? Well, the first thing I would say is this is not the end of the story. It's more than uh, you know, your child or uh, is more than the disability. Uh, the disability is only part of who they are. And with OI, of course, there's a full spectrum of severity when it comes to having OI. So I can really only speak to those who may have what I have, which is a mild form of it, type one. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say, you know, allow your child to experiment allow your child to learn how to embrace the disability as opposed to uh, deny the disability. Uh, really teach your child to get in touch with their feelings about their disability. Uh, you know, accessibility, learning how to uh, move around in the world with the disability. Uh, I feel it's very important to just understand that it is a part of who they are and a part of who you are as someone with OI to uh, just know that it's a part of you and to, how to learn how to incorporate it into your life. And, uh, and, and you'll definitely find more success that way. And you'll live a more fulfilling life that way if you look at it in a broader perspective. Because a lot of people will either see it one way or the other, where it's like, well, the disability is all it's about. Or, well, we're not even going to talk about that. And so I like to find that that medium, that balance between that that middle point is the is the sweet spot. That's what I've been able to find, and so I encourage everybody to really find their way there. 
Okay, thank you so much. Um, as we come to the end of our time together, I want to thank you not only for your time, uh, but also for your incredible story and this remarkable advice that you're laying down. It's uh, definitely something that my childhood could have used, getting in touch with my feelings about my condition uh, and finding a place where I could excel, uh, not in spite of my disability, but also not because of my disability. So I really respect that. All right, my friend. My last question is one that I ask everybody, regardless of uh, project or regardless of, of topic. Where can people find you online? This is your chance to really, you know, promote yourself, be your own cheerleader, you know, get out there, stand up on your own soapbox. Um, or if you're not that much of an online presence, you know, share one recent win about your life. You know, disability and capability do coexist all the time. Uh, so, yeah, shout it out, promote yourself. What's going on? Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. I want everybody to come and visit me at my website. It's TonyJacobson.com. That's Jacobson with an E, just so you know. It's TonyJacobson.com, and uh, you can get there uh, and come and find out everything I've got going on. I wrote a great book. It's called Disable Your Disability, Live the Healthy Life You Deserve. I tell them about my journey, about getting and staying healthy with my disability and i give you some tips in there about how to do it and then also i'm a fitness coach i'm a certified personal trainer so i've got coaching programs where i can actually help you get and stay healthy despite of and with your limitations so i'm very excited for that i've got a brand new coaching program coming up called stronger bones group coaching so i want you to find out about that and then also i've got a brand new book out i'm not sure when this is going to air but the, the book is ready for pre-sale so you can go and grab it right now on amazon I'm so excited for this. It's called Advice to Be Unbreakable. It's your guide to overcoming challenges, embracing uniqueness, and cultivating a mindset of resilience and positivity. It is, in a nutshell, the book you need when you want to be unbreakable. So come and check me out at TonyJacobson.com. Lots of great stuff happening there. And I know you're ready to be unbreakable with me, so come and join me. That's remarkable, Tony. Your marketing is on point. I love it. All right, my friend, thank you so much for your time. Have a great rest of your day and a fantastic weekend. Thank you, Nico. Good to see you. Thank you, everybody.